Hi everyone, it's time for a short update about my open source library Tiny Insights for .NET MAUI. In my latest video about it, I show you the basic features. And that was recently after I created it, uploaded it and so on. And now I have continued to work with it. And also I have got some pull requests, some contributors that are helped me to make the library better. So in this video, I will give you a short update what has happened since last time. So if we go to the GitHub page, we can see that we have some new contributors. I have updated the, the docs a bit. And one new thing is from a request I got, and that is that we should be able to use the iLogger interface because you maybe are using that already in your apps or you want to use it because that is a, some sort of .NET standard. So I decided to add support for that in Tiny Insights. And if you want to know all the basics about how Tiny Insights works, I recommend you to first go and watch my previous video about it. So, okay, let's continue with iLogger. You will add that by using the use Tiny Insights as iLogger method in your MAUI program class. And you will pass the connection string to application insights. So this is a bit different about how you do with um, the standard interface, I would say, the Tiny Insights standard interface, where you just use, use Tiny Insights. And of course you can configure the provider as you did with the other interface. So you can set is track dependency enabled, is track events enabled, is track errors enabled, is track page views, track crashes, and is auto tracking views enabled. And when you use iLogger, you will just inject it like this, for example, in your view model. And then you can use it so to track page views. If you have auto tracking disabled, you use log trace for events, tr log information, and for error, of course, log errors. Then you can also use the log debug method, and that will just use the debug right line. I don't recommend you to use the iLogger interface because you will get more out of the library if you use the regular iInsights and uh, with that, you also will be able to add more than one provider if you want to. But if you prefer the iLogger interface or you already have it in your app, you can now use it. And maybe you heard that I said auto tracking of page views. If you did, you heard right. That is something new that we got in a pull request. And that means that you don't have to write code for tracking the pages. And that is on by default. So you don't have to do anything at all to get the views tracked. And that's good because that makes it less code to write and you don't have to add it in a base class for pages or add it to every single page. So that's a good thing, I think. So the other thing I have done is that I have created a new website project and the reason for that is that the old web page, or the, maybe you should not call it old because you can still use it, the one that I refer to here, that was built with WebAssembly, Blazor WebAssembly. The problem there is that I used API key for authentication. And in March 2025, you will not be able to use API keys anymore. Then you need to have uh, Entra ID authentication. So what I did then was I decided to create a new project, a Blazor server project that you can configure everything you need for the Entra authentication. You can have set up app settings with your secrets and so on. And then I reused all the code from the web uh, assembly project. So that is just the dependency of the web server project. So and how to set up that? You can take a look at the separate video that I have, or you can read the documentation here. And this documentation walks through all you need to know how to set up Entra, uh, the application there, and also how to set up the permissions for application insights instance. 
So here's everything you need to know about that. That was more or less everything I have done. So if we now go to that website, so if we go to this website, we'll get a prompt to sign in. So I do that with my Microsoft account. I accept that it can read application insights data and here the site is. And I also worked with the site a bit since the last video. I make it possible to search for user ID, a user ID that will be generated by the library or you can set your own. If for example, if you have a user ID in your system, you want to use that. But remember to keep personal data away from the library if you can. So preferably you have a user ID instead of a username, but that is up to you. But if we, for example, go here to errors, uh, we pick one error and we want to know what the user have done before. We can do that by going here to show all properties and then find user ID and then we copy that one and then we can search for it. So here we can see every event for that user and then we can uh, track that. So that's new. We have dependencies here, failed dependencies. I think we have that last time I showed the website as well. But what I've added is more info about the devices, operating systems, device types, manufacturers. And here I also plan to add more information. Uh, this website is something that I plan to continue to de develop to add more views. And I also added this uh, dashboard where you have the most important data crashes and errors and users. So if you have feedback for Tiny Insights, please go and create an issue. It can be that you have a problem, a feature suggestion and so on. And you're also welcome to contribute, but please create an issue before you create a pull request, especially if it's a new feature so we can discuss it and what we want to do with it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos about .NET MAUI. See you next time. Bye bye.